pink man himself. Slater, Mullins, Doyle and Nielsen across midfield. And then that front three, Vickers, Barrington and Duffus. And they will rotate around. So need to keep a close eye on your markers in this game. Ben Thornley alongside me for this one and uh, hot off the back of a very good win at, at West Bromwich Albion. A little bit of a break and now Manchester United into the business end of the season. Just five games left. At time. Yeah, they have had a little bit of a break and it was a good performance against West Brom. Um, I don't think the game, from what I can remember of it, Liam, was you know littered with, with great quality, but they got the job done, scored three goals, didn't concede, and they need to kick on now just to consolidate that position that they need in the top 16 of this division. Yeah, and we'll go through exactly what that means because it's it's a little bit different. The PL2 has switched to this Swiss format this year and it, it can get a bit complicated. So when we get the opportunity, we will explain that to you in full in case you are just joining us for Premier League 2 action late on in the season. So Charlie McNeil getting ready to get us underway. Referee blows his whistle, and because we are in the no room for racism couple of weeks in the Premier League, all 22 players take a knee in an ongoing stand against discrimination in all of its forms. A perfect message to continue to send, and an important one too. McNeil gets us underway then, and uh, Premier League 2 action on a Monday evening. Two games in a week for Travis Binion's side. They play at Old Trafford against Liverpool on Friday too. And it is that back three, so we'll just keep a little eye on exactly how Manchester United line up, Ben, because it was quite fluid from what I remember against West Bromwich Albion and, and quite difficult to nail down exactly what the formation and the, and the tactics were from Travis Binion. Yeah, but I think it's uh, it's going to be a little bit more evident tonight because that works so well. And you can see there that Bauman is the sort of deepest line midfielder. He will look to sort of pick up at the point and release the likes of Oyedele and Curley and get the wide players involved and certainly get the front two of McNeil and Ennis running into those gaps. You know how much Reese Bennett likes to get forward as well. He, he is very capable of bringing the ball out from the back. You saw it there as Manchester United breaking up the field. Starts everything off. Turn around the corner by Ayadeli. Can't be kept in though. But decent position here for Agonai to take the throw in. Ayadeli struggling to keep that one in. So Doyle conspiring to get this clear out. It comes to Slater. Ayadeli quickly closes it down. Falls out of play. It was a position, a, a position, a system that they persistently used, didn't they, for for quite a while in their first team, Brighton. This sort of three-four-three, three, and they've obviously got the players here that they feel that they can revert back to that at this level. Um, it can be very, very attacking, but it does create the gaps, and especially down the sides. And when you've got wing backs like we have with Amas and Ogunai, then that's what you want to be looking to exploit and dragging those right and left centre-backs out for for Brighton and then the gaps start to appear through the middle for midfielders to run into. We were talking about Harry Amas, weren't we, with uh, Peter Drury yesterday for the first team game. We're having a really long conversation with Harry being in the first team squad yesterday. So flag stays down. United win possession back with Bauman. All the way back to the captain, Sonny Al Joffrey on leaps and bounds since progressing from the 18 Sonny Al Joffrey alongside him Reese Bennett who also won the FA Youth Cup didn't he with the under 18s well, Manchester United's academy getting rightly praised over recent weeks and you can see just how important those players are the likes of Willie Kambala and Kobe Mainu making a big difference to Manchester United's first team efforts yesterday as well yeah I thought Willie Kambwala was excellent for him to come into that sort of an atmosphere and that big of a game uh, and perform the way he did. I thought he was superb. I really did. Ogunai comes across to Curly. Curly's going to have a go. It loops up in the air. Collected in the end by McGill. Comes on for the shot from Ruben Curly. Deflection carries it safely into the arms of the goalkeeper. Uh, not only did he play well, spoke to him after the game as well at just a very pleasant young man, articulate, well-spoken, passionate, cares an awful lot about his football and this football club, so it was a very nice conversation to have. If that's the case, he's got a big chance then. 
Sounds like he's got all the ingredients. Yeah. The question I asked him was, you seem to enjoy defending. Like, you know, you're cheering the crowd on when you've made a good tackle, and he was like, it's my job. It's what I'm passionate about. And I was like, OK, <laughs> you'll, you'll do for me, Mr. Kamwala. Down the right-hand side, Ogunai. Comes back to Bennett. In the corner it goes. Ogunai's going to try and get on the front foot here. Just a maybe a, a miscontrol ever so slightly from Manchester United wing back. Otherwise, he would potentially have been away. Yeah, just showed a little bit too much of him, but... I was never a fan of this system. You know, I've always grown up playing in a back four and, and with wingers, to be fair. But what it does, and especially when you're on the front foot, this system allow you to do is have your, your, your wide men pushed right high. And that is what they'll be looking to do. Both a Gunai and a Mass are going to start high, knowing that you've got an extra man at the back. And certainly with Reese Bennett being able to bring the ball out, it creates a whole more, a lot of options. Odell, a fire brought to the ground. Referee goes over to check on him. Will be a free kick to Brighton. He's a big lad, isn't he? Yeah. Well, if he's anything, if he's anything, anything like, like his, his uncle. His uncle, yeah. yeah. Those of you who are wondering whether the uh, familial name is, is shared, it is. He is the nephew of the man they call Chariots. Uh, some athlete, by the way. Martin Afire. Referee's just calming everything down here. Wants to have a little word with Sam Murray. Yeah, he's a bit eager. Never going to win the ball there. Letting him know he's there, though. Take that uh, conversation with the referee. Just needs to uh, stay out of the referee's sidelines for the next two or three minutes, Ben. I always tried that. Didn't not work, not didn't, work for didn't, you. It didn't work very often, no. Is that because you drew attention to Well, I, I didn't want them speaking to me, but most of the time they had no choice. <laughs> Gave them a little option. This is uh, a fire. Comes back in field to McConville, an Irishman. Through the lines to... Nielsen. Brighton just trying to feel their way into this. Manchester United with that high press. They do try and turn the ball over as high up the field as they possibly can. It's been a bit of a feature of this under-21 side this season. This is going to need dealing with, though. Offside flag goes up. Doesn't need dealing with. Yeah, they're setting up well as well. The the sort of, you know, I know we've only played, you know, just shy of seven minutes, but you can see that when the Brighton defenders are on the ball, they've not really got many options, and it's taken them seven minutes to think, right, well, we'll try and stick one over the top, which is all well and good, but not if the person you're aiming for is already a couple of yards offside. Back it comes to Dermot Mee. One of the changes from Manchester United's last time out against West Brom. Eli Harrison started in goal for the under-21s in the last game. Eli Harrison conceded just the one in a 9-1 win for the under-18s against Liverpool on Saturday morning. Great start to the weekend, that was. It certainly was. Ethan Wheatley got a hat-trick in that game. He's on the bench for Manchester United this evening. Check back from Harry Amass. Sam Murray. And now Reese Bennett. Needed a bit of movement and uh, didn't quite get it on that occasion. So recycles the ball. Curly. Maxi Ayadeli. Fades the challenge as well. Good movement this from Manchester United. Now need to do something with it, is it? Squeezes through to Curley. Curley trying to just flick that through the gap. Didn't quite come off. Nice touch. Yeah, lovely bit of control from yeah. Reese Bennett. Very confident. Spinning as well, that was. Again, United probing down this left-hand side. Pass with the 
pirouette to get himself out of trouble. Joffrey goes across to Bennett. These two know each other's game pretty well by now. Curly forward to Ennis. Chasing that around. Fire. Just gets away. Ethan Ennis tugging at the shirt gives the free kick away. So while Brighton building up here, just a reminder, that Swiss format means top 16 at the end of the regular season go through. 20 games are played. That's right. Manchester United with five games left to go. They've played 15 up until this point, so 20 games of the regular season. There's all sorts of weird pots and seedings and stuff going on, but essentially you've got to finish in the top 16. If you finish in the top 16, you go through to a single elimination playoff. I don't understand how they can devise a format and there's plenty of time where you don't play everybody once. Yeah. Why stop short at not playing four teams? It just seems a bit daft to me that. Is it more than four teams? No, three teams you, you won't play. There's 24 teams in the division and you only play 20 games. Yeah. I don't understand that. It's all based on seedings. So essentially inside the big main table is a load of mini tables. That, yeah. that other fixtures are sorted out. I know, but before that, how can you decide on seedings when you haven't played everyone? Uh, they go off, the, the seedings were decided off performance in previous seasons. And it's into the penalty area. Pulls it back, does pretty well to get there before it crosses the byline, but uh, can't squeeze it past Tom McGill, who collects and snuffs out the danger. But why don't they play everyone? I, 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 there can't be a, a, a decent response to that because there are plenty of weeks free in the season. I uh, would appreciate if you stopped asking me questions I didn't know the answers to. Right. Well, if you <laughs> say that the first time, I won't ask you three times, would I? <laughs> Do you? Uh, anyway, as it stands, Manchester United in 12th would play Wolves if the season finished tomorrow in that single elimination playoff. But if they win the games in hand that they've got, Manchester United could be fighting for a home game in that, uh, in that post-season playoff series. The other thing to bear in mind, of course, is that if Manchester United can keep winning, top 12 will be invited to take part in next season's Premier League International Cup. So if Manchester United can win their games in hand, there is a very real chance that they finish above 12. They're yeah. in 12 at the minute. So Yeah, there's added incentives there, isn't there, yeah. for them? This Swiss format's coming to the Champions League as well, so keep an eye on that. Can't get used to it. I think he just slipped there, didn't he? Yeah, I think he did. Not an awful lot of goal mouth action in the early stages of this one. Both sides just feeling each other out, trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah, it's, the tempo's relatively slow, isn't it? Uh, not the most rapid of games that we've seen. Murray. Manchester United not being hurried up by Brighton at all. No. Nope. No, they're quite happy to let United have the ball, hence the reason why they've dominated possession in these opening 12 and a half minutes. Yeah, the press starts, doesn't it? As soon as Manchester United cross the halfway line, that mid block. A fan of basketball, the half court press. switch of play might be enough to get Manchester United on the front foot but Harry Amass has gone slightly too soon and the offside flag is up against him yeah he's travelled a long way that he doesn't need to be offside looking right the way across the line Travis Binion quickly uh, off his seat you can always hear him in these games continually communicating Great from McGill. Gives possession straight back to Manchester United. Oh, 
Bauman. And a busy weekend of football for Manchester United. This one capping the weekend. I'm sure they'll want as much action as both the 18s and the first team had this weekend as the ball is in towards Charlie McNeil. Oh, good night as well to get himself out of that situation. Finds Bennett and now Ayadeli. Intricate football back to Ethan Ennis. Cross it comes. Chance for Bauman. Bauman takes the shot, comes back out to Amass with the effort. And it's just wide. And maybe Zach Bauman just taking that off the toes of Harry Amass at the back post. Yeah, he did. First time that the, the pace has quickened a little bit. And here, just a shout from Bauman from Amass. Whether he got one or not, I'm not sure. But he should have just left it. And I, I realised that it would have fallen on Harry Amass's right foot. But I still think he would have been much better place to take the shot on there. Just moving away from Cole, wasn't he? Zach Bauman in it. Slightly off balance. Slater comes back. He's spin it. Oh, it's a soft one. He's uh, been penalised for the foul on Josh Duffus. Just felt the contact behind him, didn't he? And went to ground. Referee always inclined to give those. Sam Murray playing left side of a back three. Not normally the position that we've been used to seeing Sam Murray in this season, but it's what it's all about at this level. Just making sure that everybody has experience of playing wherever they might be needed. Yeah, he's not in unfamiliar territory on that on that side. He's just got somebody outside him on this occasion, whereas under normal circumstances he wouldn't. He'd have just somebody inside and ahead of him. Bennett to Oyadeli. Black stayed down against Harry Amas. Thought he maybe had strayed there, but. Ethan Ennis trying to give this back to Charlie McNeil. Just not quite on the same page, the two Manchester United frontmen. Don't often see a front two, do you? It's so rare these days, mm. isn't it? I was doing a, doing a bit of work for one of the sponsors at United a couple of weeks back, and we were talking about just how important strike partnerships had been all the way through the 90s and early noughties, but then stopped, and I know. Uh, you just don't see it anymore. We couldn't really name one, could you, in the last sort of 10 years, I suppose? Hard, isn't it, I suppose? You know, you, you know United certainly not. R Rooney and Ronaldo maybe, but it was more sort of that front three of Manchester United, wasn't it? Spread across the pitch. It's still more than 10 years ago. Yeah. Yes, it was. It's made me feel old. And me. <laughs> nil, nil. United coming forward here through Bennett. Finds it. Pass. Pass into the middle, and it's McNeil going to get an early ball into the penalty area. Not a terrible ball into the box, just falls between two red shirts and onto the forehead of a, a Brighton defender. Yeah, it was well spotted by Reese Bennett because I saw that pass into, into Bauman, I think it was, and he disguised it really well because I didn't think he was going to play it, but it was a really well, well timed pass. Keeper takes his time, slide tackle comes in, but doesn't retrieve the ball from Ruben Curley. So Brighton break the press and out they come. Infield, Mullins moves it on to Doyle. Now on again to Vickers. Wide left to Slater. It was very calmly done by Doyle, that wasn't it? On the edge of the box under a little bit of pressure. It was a neat little turn with the outside of his right foot. They want to keep playing Brighton. They don't seem to be really getting anywhere, but 
I don't think they will change the way that they play. And with so many players up there, it's a risk. Yeah, this is Doyle. Doyle looking to get that across. Offside flag does go up. And Gary Mass was always relatively confident that the flag was coming up. Casper Nielsen trying to ghost in round the back. Can't make it happen on this occasion. We Sports Village, one of these multi-purpose venues. We see Manchester United women playing here. We see the 21s playing here, but you can also see from the lines on the pitch, it's been hosting Rugby League. A couple of sports being played here at this stage of the season. And staff do a pretty good job at keeping the pitch playable for all of those sports. Yep. Cross from Brighton. Jackson comes out to Vickers. Wriggles free, Jamie Mullins. A fire. Stretching his legs here to the edge of the penalty area. That's a good pass in behind, but uh, the run has gone too soon and the flag goes up offside and a free kick to Manchester United. Yeah, again, no need to be offside. It's a good line from United. But there's a certain plays that, that you just mentioned there from the opposition. The game's 20 minutes old, and it's the first time that you've mentioned in the likes of Vickers and Mullins. It just shows how little of the ball they've actually had, Brighton. Just starting to come into the game, aren't they? As Doyle flicks this through, real opportunity. Flag stayed down, but Dermot Mee, quickly off his line, gathers. Night comes back to Bennett. Bennett hoists it forward. It's out Charlie McNeil. McNeil wants to uh, get United on the front foot early. Pass towards the masses. Too central. It's a shame as well because he, he did brilliantly bringing the ball down and, and the defender retreated, which bought him the time and the space to be able to maybe travel with the ball, but he certainly didn't need to give it away as cheaply as that. He'd done the hard part. Game needs a, a little injection of pace, Ben. I think uh, at the moment both sides guilty of not necessarily playing it as quickly as they could. And no. It becomes quite easy to defend, doesn't it, when you're not moving the ball at pace. Down the right to Barrington. Barrington's going to have a little run at goal here. Still going, pokes it through. Chance offside. Josh Duffus gone too soon. It's quite close, wasn't it? I think that's uh, it's a bit tight. Let's have a look. Decent run, wasn't it, from Luca Barrington? I think he is probably. He just probably offside. is, but it was a close call that one. Don't the meat does well to make the save. Already committed at that point by the time the whistle goes and the flag's gone up. Me. Comes out to McNeil, who's quite deep there, Charlie McNeil, to try and help get Manchester United out. Drilled into midfield. Ennis with the touch. Out to the left. Curley finds Murray. Murray. Finds a way through to Bauman, but Bauman dispossessed. Midway point of the first half. Would you assess the opening? 22 and a bit minutes, Ben. A little bit turgid, to be honest. I don't think, you know, either team has made the goalkeeper work. Certainly United have had a lion's share of the possession, but... I think Travis Binion will be wanting them to move the ball a bit, a bit, well, not just a bit quicker, a lot quicker. I think that the one time that they did when they played the little one-two on the edge of the box, which resulted in the chance for, for Harry Amass that he fired wide, I think that is an idea of what he would like from them, just to speed it up a little bit and cause them problems, because both teams have, you know, it's, it's almost like a, a sort of shadow training game. 
Yeah. I haven't seen a tackle yet. It, 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 there's not been an awful lot of anything, has no, there, really? No, it wasn't what I was expecting at all because, you know, Brighton, are, throughout the whole club, they like to, to have possession of the ball, they like to play some attractive football and we haven't seen that from them at all. Is this a, a symptom of the of the break that we've had, maybe? Teams playing themselves back into the season after a bit of a bit of a halt in festivities I suppose it could be but they didn't have to be did they because three teams that they don't play I won't mention it again no 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 I think you've made your point then <laughs> put you in touch with the uh, Premier League two bosses and you can work it out with them Maxi Ayadeli finds McNeil McNeil now needs to try and find a further pass. Gets it out to Bauman. Now there's runners for Manchester United. Can they work it into the penalty area? Even just things like that. He was in a lot of space there, Charlie McNeil. And everything was just a little bit laboured, you know, the touch. And, you know, rather than getting on the front foot, letting it come across your body. And, and he, he's straight on. Everything's just a little bit one-paced at the moment from both sides, to be fair. Menis tries to play a ball down the left-hand side to Amas, but just overplayed. It rolls over the dead ball line, front of the fullback. So goal kick. He was under a bit of pressure, but he's managed to keep the possession. Comes back to a fire. Now infield to Mullins. Moved up the field by Jackson. Slater put under some pressure from Argonai. Decided to go over the top, but... Well, there's no craft or guile on that pass, is that no. straight down the throat of Dermot Mee. I'm surprised that they don't use Duffers because he's come into it, you know, right deep into the United half to, to collect the ball. They've got two other forwards playing alongside him up there or maybe just off him. Why don't they use him as a decoy and, and then play the ball over the top? Because it's obviously dragged Rhys Bennett right out of that space with him and yet they keep playing it into him and all it ends up doing is going back. I, I want to try a different tact. I would imagine that we will see a, a change at some point from one of these sides because at the moment neither is making any headway in the game. Oyadeli, like a foul, but managed to uh, retrieve possession. Bauman. I mean, 27 gate, 27. <laughs> 27 minutes old the game I know it feels like it's 27 games old and, uh, <laughs> and the, especially because we're so used to it with the 21s as well the goal, neither goalkeepers had a save to make very unusual neither goalkeepers had a save to make very, very and I'm strange. not counting the one that Dermot Mee made because it was offside and Joffrey Curley Mass considerable pressure referee says no foul so Nielsen takes over Mass steps in wins the ball back United just unable to get the ball forward to Ennis with any kind of pace and Harry Mass is penalised for the foul on Casper Nielsen and the free kick is Brighton's I'm not so sure there's much in that and Casper Nielsen in his attempt to win the ball back and atone for his error when he lost it rather cheaply over the far side. I, I don't think Harry Amass did a lot wrong there at all. I'm trying to agree with you. Ben Jackson. Just nullifying each other, these two sides at the moment. The back threes and the, you know, five across midfield, six across midfield for both of them. Just uh, making the game a little attritional.
Combeville. Whipped out to the right hand side. Injection of pace from Brighton. Across it comes to Mullins. Goes all the way past Mullins and out to Slater. Back to Jackson again. I think there's going to have to be a goal scored by one of these teams to, to wake the whole affair up. Comes back to Tom McGill. Very nearly gets himself caught out, but the long ball should be dealt with. A little bit of confusion between me and Ogunai, but eventually they sort it out between themselves. Camley done. I think we get more concerned in the commentary box, don't we, than they get on the pitch. <laughs> McNeil. Bowman. Raven Curley's not going to get there. Working hard to try and win that back from McConville. It's Brighton, though, that have managed to pick this up and created a bit of space. Now some danger for Manchester United to deal with. Cross, it comes from a fire. Can it be turned home? No, it can be turned away by Habib Ogunai. It looks like a fire has got some of his attributes from his uncle because once he opens those legs, he is quick, very, very tough to stop. And it was a lovely little Cruyff flick round the corner, wasn't it, that set him away. But good concentration for a good eye at the back post. Didn't go to sleep. Tracked his man. That's the first clear break that Brighton have really had. Eventually well defended by Manchester United. Mullins back out to a fire it's another good ball down the right for Brighton can they make this into an opportunity Vickers wanted the run in behind Vickers didn't get it but it's come back out to Jamie Mullins fired into the penalty area first set piece that we've seen as well this will be the first corner for either side comes off Jacob Slater's attempted cross. Well, that just goes to show how little attacking intent there's been from either side that there's only the first corner into the 32nd minute of the game. Going to go deep into conversation about uh, corner tactics here. Barrington comes over as a quiet word and then remains in that corner as the short corner option. Delivered towards the back post, well claimed by me. He wanted to get that on the way as quickly as he could, but it just ran out of options, didn't he? Yeah, very commanding. You could hear his shout a long way away. What do you want from your goalkeeper? Isn't yeah, it? absolutely not been called upon so he was probably grateful for a little bit of catching practice positive first touch for him as well really United looking to work it down the right side. Back it comes to McGill. Loose in midfield. Can United pick it up? They can. Good work from Curley. Forward it comes to McNeil. McNeil trying to make himself some space, but so quickly closed down. Can't get the turn and shot away. Slater goes back to the keeper. 
That's not great from McGill. They've done that a couple of times. Just such waywardness on the passing on both sides of the field from Brighton. Played ball straight out of play. Murray. Bennett takes a touch, wants to spread the play to the United right. Realises that pass is known. Bauman spins away from danger. Curly to Ayadeli. Ayadeli comes back to Bauman. Murray. Amas. Amas does well in traffic and wins the free kick too. It's well done from the Manchester United number three. First team squad against Liverpool yesterday. Harry Amass didn't see any game time, but would have been a heck of an experience for him. Oh, I'll say. Old Trafford yesterday. Some second half we were treated to. Three times Manchester United have played Liverpool this season. Liverpool haven't won any of them. season where you go through beating Liverpool more than they've beaten you is a positive one isn't it? Of course it is. Nice turn. Yeah, away they go again. It just becomes a bit sticky once they reach the final third although that's not a terrible ball in towards Josh Duffus. It just can't reel it in. Do you know what? I thought it was a brilliant ball. It really was. He just wasn't quite on the same wavelength. If he, if he had have been then he would have his run would have been more lateral rather than going forward, and he, his, the control would have been really easy. It was a really clever pass, that. Clearance from me. Long and downfield. Does Duffus go with his left foot there, or did he go with his right foot? He went to control it with his right foot. Yeah, if he'd gone with his left, he might reach that. Yeah. Well, even if he'd have sort of miscontrolled it, he still would have been in to have a, have a shot on it, wouldn't he? I thought that was the case. I didn't back myself. Should have done, really. United are playing some pressure high up the field. This is a little more like the Manchester United we've seen this season. Really harassing inside the opponent's defensive third. Yeah, he perhaps doesn't need to be so tight, Reese Bennett, because he isn't going anywhere, Vickers. Just don't give the referee an option. Again and again, the pass is wayward. Again, we've gone through 37 minutes here without a real opportunity on either goal. In fact, yeah. I can't think of one. No, me neither. Harry Amas had that one that he put past the post, and I think that's basically it. How rare in Premier League 2 football is it to go through an entire almost the entire first half with no real attempt on goal. No. Very, very rare indeed. McGill comes out to Doyle. It's actually unusual for there not to be a goal, never mind not an attempt. It goes up against Caelan Vickers. That always looked like it was going to be the case. Bauman bringing the ball away. Again, just no real pace in the game at all, as you can see. United just taking their time. Me comes out to Bauman. Bauman comes back across to Murray. Curly steps in. United back in possession with Ethan Ennis. Ennis finds Ayadeli. Like an eye on the run down the right hand side. Can he be picked out? He can. 
of Eve Oganai. Just not quite as joined up as Manchester United would have wanted. And that's been the story of the first half, really, Ben. No, I mean, how many times have we actually seen Habib Oganai or Harry Amas actually get into positions in the offensive half where they can, you know, they can fire crosses into the box? I, I don't think we've seen it once, to be honest with you. And when you're playing that sort of a system, yes, you have to do your defensive work, and it's a tough job playing at wing back. But because you have a bit of an overload in midfield, and because you're Manchester United, you hope that that comes to the fore more often than not. We just haven't seen it. Reese Bennett just trying to cushion that pass into the path of Ogunai. Quite get the control on it that he wanted and makes uh, Ogunai's job a little tricky. Trying to get on the end of it. I mean, over the years, we've been really spoilt with the, the, the entertaining football matches that the under-21s even going back to when they were under 23s have been involved in yeah so it's odd when you see games like this it's a dangerous ball and deflected too but he quickly off his line rolls that into the path of Harry Amas when he let that go I thought he, <laughs> I thought he just rolled it straight out of play I thought he was going to catch he it knew up what himself. he was doing yeah <laughs> Rolls it out. I knew he was going to latch onto the end of his own uh, his own pass. Damn it, me goes on a mazy run. Chance here for United if they can get the cross right. Oh, it's a dangerous one. It's in the back of the net, and it's come from absolutely nowhere. Harry Amas drilling the cross from the left hand side, turned into the back of their own net by Brighton. United in front. Manchester United won. Brighton nil. There you go. Rest my case. <laughs> We get into a really good position. There's a bit of an overload with with a mass over on that far side, just going round. Who is it? Murray. Sam Murray, Sam Murray yeah. yeah. And he fires a ball in at the near post, and you can see the defender there. And I'm not sure which one it was that put it into the back of his own net. Draws the defender towards him, fired across into the near post. I think it's McConville. Hey, McConville, yeah, the skipper. And the first time that I, the team, has like, had to do any sort of real defending in terms of stopping a goal, and United go 1-0 up, but it's a really good ball from Harry Hamas. I'm, I'm not taking anything away from it, but that's what I was talking about earlier, that that's what he's on the pitch for, a gun either same. Draw him in and let's get crosses into the box and see how they deal with it, and they've done it once, and they're 1-0 up. You might have heard Eric Ten Hag yesterday talking about the half spaces um, and Manchester United trying to be a bit better in those half spaces. What you've seen there is Sam Murray occupying the half space that Eric Ten Hag was talking about, a mass going in the wide area. And, and because you've committed a defender to come and mark the half space, it's given the space out on the outside for, for Harry Amas to exploit. Well, in that sort of a position, it's perfect because it's 2v1. And unless you fluff your lines and, and don't make the pass either under hit it or allow it to be cut out then you should be able to create every day of the week we're just not we haven't seen it because there's not really been enough impetus and enough enough pace about the game to to be able to draw defenders and to make life difficult for them but yeah. It may as well be United that scored the goal to get the. Hopefully, it'll inject a little bit of light, life into it into the second half, because this has been just about the, you know, the dullest game I've ever seen the 21s play or be involved with. Yeah, and I mean that has been helped an awful lot by Brighton being quite static too. Yeah. But now they've got to, they've got to push out if they exactly. want to take this result away. Yeah. That's what I was thinking, that one goal means that the other team's got to chase and then you might start to see what both teams are capable of because I'm pretty sure that Brighton, we know what, what Manchester United are capable of, but I'm pretty sure Brighton are capable of a, a damn sight more than this. And we might see an entertaining second half. I'm going to roll out one of the, uh, the old football cliches here, but just before half-time, it, it, it's a good time to score, isn't it? 
one minute of time added on coming up, I reckon, at the end of this half. Yeah, well, if you're going to be involved in a game like this, you may as well be the team that's, that scores the goal and goals in front. Because I don't think it, neither of us ever thought it was coming, and neither did the spectators that were there. None of the people watching what we have. We need to increase our lead. And Brighton need to get something back and start to make a game of it. Ben Jackson comes out to Jacobs later. Back it comes to Jackson. A fire. Fire gets it in. It's turned behind. Is it Bowman? Wellies it into the stand behind the goal. Corner. One last bit of defensive work to do. And the half will be over for Manchester United and uh, look like they're taking in a 1-0 advantage. Here comes the delivery then. Out swinger, headed away by Reese Bennett. Great That's a towering header, wasn't yeah. it? Comes out to Mullins. Duffus slides it inside. <coughs> Slater comes back across, but it's intercepted by Ethan Ennis. Bennett back to Al Joffrey. to Dermot Mee, Manchester United trying to see out this final 30 seconds of the first half. Go in with the lead and then 45 minutes to go to take another three points away. I would imagine that Travis Binion will have a couple of little tweaks that he'll want to make for the second half, Ben. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure he will. I think he'll want, he'll want an injection of pace right from the word go. Um, I think both team talks will be exactly the same, but United's Slightly better because they're a goal in front. Delhi swings the cross in, pops back out to Ogunai. <laughs> Half time whistle goes, and Manchester United uh, off the field with a 1 0 advantage. <coughs> Took an awful long time to come. Harry Amas down the left hand side. Sam Murray committing players. Amas gets round on the overlap, fired the cross in from the left, and turned into the back of their own net by Brighton's Rory McConville. And that is all of the action from the first 45 minutes. A very slow half, but United have the lead at the break. At half-time, Manchester United 1, Brighton and Hove Albion 0. Passion. It's my city, it's my everything. It's far more than just a song. And that song starts, you stick your chest out. For me, Manchester United is the one. Lad, though, gets it into the penalty area. Finds Garcia. Garcia tries to find a yard of space, then slides it through to Hayley Ladd. Hayley Ladd with the right-footed finish. Gets the goal to go with her assist. Brilliant stuff from Manchester United's midfield maestro. United 4 0 up against Spurs. And it was the lad who played the ball into Garcia, and you can just see Garcia trying to get it onto her right foot, trying to find the opportunity for it. It's Arsenal against Manchester United, and a tremendous atmosphere here in North London. It is Beckham, though, and it's a beauty, and Cole's header hits the bar. It's done brilliantly here, Canu, and what a shot! Would have been one of the goals of the season if Raymond van der Howe hadn't produced such a brilliant save. It's goals layoff. Dwight York hits it. And again, the goalkeeper has kept Arsenal in it. But can Van Mark if he sees it? And he has. And on it goes to Jungberg. He scored. He loves playing against Manchester United. Is Vieira. Captain Roy King. Excellent build-up, crisp finish, and Arsenal's lead has been demolished. 
Carlos dispossessed though by Giggs. Danger here for Arsenal. Ryan Giggs hits it, and it comes to Roy Keane, and Keane has slipped home the winner, surely. Two and a half minutes to go. The captain gets his second goal of the game, and Manchester United players and fans celebrate. The final score, Arsenal 1, Manchester United 2. Welcome back. So United 1-0 ahead at half time in the 45 minutes of very few chances. But thankfully, the only goal uh, came to us. It's not been the greatest of halves in terms of goal mouth action, has it? Um, how do you assess how we played in that first 45 minutes? Uh, yeah, I think it's been quite quite bland, uh, to be honest, from both teams. Um, you know, I believe, you know, with the formation which, you know, Travis has got them playing, you know, I would like to see them, you know, exploit the... Uh, you know the final third. You know in the uh, in the wide areas a little bit more. Pretty much where the where the goal come from. Um, and I think we heard Ben speak about it in terms of you know getting somebody you know with a little bit of bit of that pace to go and get into um, some of their players' faces. Yeah, because it has been quite attritional. From you're right from both teams really. Does it need just something to happen a bit more um, pace? Maybe a couple of tackles flying in to get them really pumped up and. And go in for that second half. Yeah, really. Well, just from from watching that first half, I would say you know with the formation that they play in, it's you know when especially when you've got in well in, in possession, should I say, you know when you've um, got the free at the back and you've got the wing backs, you know you've you know, you've got the uh, the old goal to you know go and exploit them areas and and cause a problem. You know especially once one of your uh, strikers start to come across the pitch as well a little bit, you know you can cause uh, you know that overload and, and and problems for the opposition. Uh, let's have a look at the only goal of the game then. Um, it was an own goal by Rory McConville, but after good work on our left-hand side, uh, this was kind of a pattern of play, wasn't it? United comfortable on the ball, knocking it about without really penetrating. But this is one of the few times we actually did get an overload on that side. Um, it's a good ball in, and the defender has to make some kind of attempt for it, doesn't he? Yeah, you know, you can see it started on the right hand side and you no know, ball's gone into the midfield and it's opened up, you know, brought out to the left. I think it's Sam Murray with the uh, with the layoff and you know again in a, in, a, in a very good dangerous area, you know. Yeah, Mass puts a really dangerous ball in there, doesn't he? Yeah, for sure. As we spoke about then, just you know when you've got the um, you know your your five at the back, it, it gives you that leverage to you know go and bomb on a little bit a little bit further, you know, as the uh, the right um, right and left uh, wing backs. Um, and as you say, it's, it's a great ball into the box, you know. And you know, fortunate for us, it's it's an own goal and gone into the uh, gone into the Brighton goal. Yeah, had um, the defender not got a touch, then Ennis was on hand to have knocked it in. Yeah. Charlie McNeil was in vicinity as well, but someone would have got um, a toe on it. That's for sure. The only other real chance I know was from Harry Amas um, playing as that left wing back. Of course, he was delighted to be part of the first team squad against Liverpool here yesterday. Um, but to get on that pitch is what he wants to do and, and play football. This, uh, after Bowman's shot was blocked, comes back to Amas and he just can't quite hit the target there. Yeah, well, again, look at the look at the area that he's in for someone who's playing as a as a defender. You know, a left sided or a right sided uh, wing back, just like we've been saying, pretty much a right or left back. You know, it gives you that leverage to bomb forward and you know get yourself into. Um, you know them areas on the pitch. I think someone who used to do it really well for the club, for me, even when we played four at the back, was uh, Raphael and Fabio, Fabio uh, De Silva. But they were uh, brilliant at doing it. I think at one point he had a tournament for for Brazil, and they've, I think they were both top goal scorers playing as uh, playing as fullback. So no, no, he's he's, he's in a very good um, very good area. And as we we say, with the quality of player that you know is out there on display, you know they will be able to find passes. Yeah, they certainly can. And there are a few options. On the bench for United, if we want to try and change it a bit, Ashton missing scored a belter against Liverpool for the 18s at the weekend. Maybe we we'll get a chance to see him. So I imagine we'll start as we finish that half. But those players will have to step up a gear, or else Travis will be using the subs. Yeah, for sure. I think he will be quite disappointed personally. Um, yeah. Again, you know, you're, you're the home team. You know, used to that ground, used to the boys around you, and I think again, it's just to have that little bit of umph about themselves and. You know, I'm pretty sure that they'll be getting told that um, at half time, and you know, like we say, you know, players are on the bench. You know, it's, it's one of them where you've got to make sure that you keep yourself prepared. You know, throughout that first 45 minutes, that 
you know, when you're called upon, that you're ready to rock and roll and, you know, go and showcase. Yeah, absolutely. OK, um, we're going to take another break now and build up to the second half when we come back. Most of my life, I've had to kind of hide who I am, and I've never really been able to be myself. And Rainbow Devils helps me to do that because it accepts me for exactly who I am. My name's Cass Hyde, and I'm part of Rainbow Devils, and I'm a committee member that looks after things to do with social media, but also to do with the women's game. at least Sports Village today and it's the home as sort of uh, Manchester United women's team and the under 21s and yeah I've been going here for about four years since they were in the WSL. When I was younger I was sort of interested in football maybe but not necessarily obsessed with football but puberty for like a trans person is quite complicated so I think for me a lot of sort of like quote unquote boy things kind of went out the window uh, and that football went with it. The women's game I think is sort of a good sort of stepping stone especially people from the LGBT community because lots of fans are part of it, some players as well. From my point of view, it was sort of maybe it was a point of view of getting back into football and uh, finding a way to enjoy the beautiful game. It's not because oh, football's all right. We love football and we love this team, and this is why we're here. It's like making something greater than the sum of ourselves, and it sort of creates magic. Really, it's a beautiful thing. A lovely ball as well from Garcia finds Nelson. Nelson's in the penalty area, shot comes in, it's a goal. Lovely footwork from Lisa Nelson. The ball slid through to her, watched it open up and finished brilliantly into the bottom right hand corner. United lead inside 10 minutes. Yeah, really good individual goal from Nelson. Nice little layoff from Garcia, we'll just see here. Nelson cuts inside and slots it in. Bristol City will be disappointed with that. Welcome back. Um, there wasn't loads to talk about in that first half, so instead uh, what we're going to do is just have a little look at yesterday's game against Liverpool. Of course, it's still fresh in the memory, so too um, how we didn't manage to get... See what he's going to be like in the future as well, once he starts to mature even more than what he already is, uh, or how is he or acting. And then Aaron gives away the penalty. I mean, the replay show he didn't touch Elliot. Elliot moved his right foot. Is. I, th no I, think, I think Harvey Elliott's been quite smart with how he's left his, um, his, his, uh, his right, yeah. right leg in there, to be honest. But if you watch it back slowly, you know, I think it's one of them where he's not even touched him at all. But no. Of course. There's clear daylight in between Aaron's right foot and Elliot. It's that the right foot of Elliot, isn't it, kind of goes into Aaron when he's, on the, when he's yeah. prone into his kind of thigh. Yeah, under his thigh. But Elliot's definitely... Yeah, move you, you towards can, him. You can you can see that with his leg. Once he's tried to step up, he's he has moved his leg um, in a little bit. But again, it's that's that's smart smart play from him. You know, fair play to him. It, it is football. It happens, and yeah. you can't dwell on this. You've just got to uh, you know accept what's happened, and you've got to keep it moving. But annoyingly, we could have had nine points from these three tough games: two down yeah. in in West London and the game against Liverpool. And instead, we just have two. I know, yeah. I, I, as we said, it, I think it's quite devastating. You know, uh, you know. For, I think I think it'd be devastating for the players, for the fans, of course. Uh, yeah. You know, people obviously pay a lot of money to come and you know see these games, whether it's home or, or away trips. So, no, as I say, we have to just all stick together. You know, when um, again, you know what a you know unbelievable group of footballers that first team is, and 
you know they they'll know themselves that it's not it's not great at the minute and and things have to be better especially playing for you know this club you know at, at senior level not just senior level that's going all the way through from academy all the way up but yeah. you know especially once you're at that at top level you no know, it's it's an expectation every single game yeah because we need to be in good form going into the cup semi final against Coventry and mm-hmm. hopefully a cup final you want to be going into big games like that um, in the best possible shape yeah for sure I think even the the Coventry game and you know, it's no disrespect to Coventry, but you know, you you can't you can't belittle them. You know, no. anything can happen in a game of football. You know, if you don't turn up, it's eleven v eleven uh, on that pitch, and you know, if you if you're asleep, you'll get found out. Yeah, they're a good team actually. Coventry, yeah, I haven't yeah. watched a bit of them in the championship. Obviously, beat Wolves in the last round, which is a terrific result. I mean, it's a potential banana skin that game. For sure. Yeah. Well, again, it's a it's a massive club in terms of a a big fan base as well. That was one of the clubs that I was um, on loan from. Uh, or loan to sorry from uh, from this club when I was when I was at Man United. So now they've got um, you know some really good players. They're playing really well this year. You know Mark Robinson's got them playing some good football. Probably over the last few years, to be fair, he's yeah. you know he's got them playing some good football. No fair play to to that team. But again, leading into that into that game, we all know what should be happening. But like you say in there, you know you want to make sure that the confidence levels are you know, a, a high, um, because anything can happen in a game of football. Yeah, so we need to go to Bournemouth at the weekend and and beat them. That's not an easy game either way at Bournemouth, is it, for the first team? No, not at all. Again, Bournemouth, you know, they've I think they've surprised a lot of people over the over the last few years. Um, and they've had a lot of ups and downs, of course. Yeah. Um, but no, I think after the game on the weekend as well against Luton, you know, to, you know, get beat 2-1, um, you know, it, it, it puts us in in good position. You know, leading into leading into that game. Um, again, a team that you've got to show respect to. Uh, it is a game of football, and you know, hopefully that the boys are on fire in that in that game, and you go and get the three points. Yeah, we owe them one after uh, they came to Old Trafford and, and beat us three 0 I remember one of the, the worst performances we've had um, of the season. So let's hope we go down to the south coast and put in one of our best. OK, uh, two teams are back out on the pitch now, so let's hand back to your commentators, Ben and Liam. Thanks very much indeed. The uh, rain has started to fall at the Lee Sports Village. Fans are taking shelter under hoods and umbrellas. Hopefully, we're going to get a bit of a brighter second half than we had in the opening 45 minutes. Both sides a little slow to start playing the game. Manchester United waiting until very late to back themselves a goal players coming out onto the field we are going to have a change and I think that's Ashton Missing who is warming up over on the far side so it is and that means that I think Reese Bennett has made way so that would suggest Ben Thornley a return to a back four for Manchester United if you're going to get Missing on the Argonai that slides in on right back Al Joffrey and Murray the Potentially the two centre halves and then a mass. Was it not? A gun eye. A gun eye that makes way. So that is a direct change. Like for like. For like. like. Yeah. Ashton missing on to replace Habib Ogunai. Well, I'm not so sure that's probably, you know, if it's been forced or whether Travis Binion needs a little bit more thrust down that right hand side I mean they need a little bit down both sides but at least the goal did come and probably look more likely to come down the left a bit more balance maybe for Manchester United we shall wait and see so Brighton getting ready to get us underway in this second period we are underway Brighton getting us started. Casper Nielsen comes back to Odell Afire. Confirmation that it wasn't uh, Reese Bennett that made way, as I thought it was going to be. Instead, Habib Ogunai has left the field. Confirmation on your screen now. And he has been replaced by Ashton Missing. Brighton. In possession with Barrington. And again, it's a similar sort of pace from Brighton in the opening stages of this second half than we saw at the end of the first. 
Early ball forward, flicked on, round the corner to Nielsen. Nielsen, Swede comes back to Odellafia. Fired back into McConville. Chance here to get in behind. Ashton Missing comes back and makes the uh, challenge. Needed to get there too because it was a decent run down the left from Slater. Ball deflects behind for an early corner. Yeah, just a ball in behind that they didn't find at all in the first half. Brighton players offside, and when they did try it. Kamari Doyle will take the left wing corner. Pushing and shoving inside the penalty area. Brighton try and get themselves ready. Ben Jackson aiming here. Nearly gets there too, Jackson. In fact, he uh, collides heavily with Reese Bennett. And that's what the referee blows the whistle for. Yeah, that's another brilliant header from Reese Bennett. He certainly. Oh, yeah, he did get a crack, didn't he? Yeah. But he is certainly the. Uh, the player that they need to clear at the near post and on both occasions he's headed away okay, that's a proper dead leg for Reese Bennett yeah I don't think people understand you know when you hear you know a dead leg's been given out I'm not sure they understand how dangerous they can be actually they can be pretty serious can't they I I had one when I was at Manchester United playing in a reserve game against Liverpool and somebody did it, it wasn't in my thigh, it was the back of my calf and it, it actually turned out to be quite serious to the point where they might have needed to relieve the pressure to, yeah, to relieve the pressure, fortunately the pressure went down, but a little bit of a lesson for you when it becomes so swollen and the muscle is not working as it should if you're inert for quite a long time the brain starts sending messages to the body that you've actually broken a bone and it starts sending bits of bone to the muscle and that's when it does get very serious Crikey. yeah i probably didn't explain that brilliantly but anybody of a <laughs> of a medical nature will know what I'm, what i'm trying to say Calcification, it's called. Wow. There you go. Things you learn for an under-21s commentary. Shot comes in. It's blocked behind by Manchester United. It's actually pretty good work from Zach Bauman to get back and put some pressure on Josh Duffus. But it's consecutive corners for Brighton, and they've, uh, they've come out with a bit between their teeth here, trying to get in behind. Yeah, he doesn't get anything on it, does he, Al Joffrey? Bauman back there to help out. Let's see if he manages to do it this time. Kamari Doyle sends it in. Oh, Rory McConville that was reaching for it. Comes down from a height as well, but he bounces back up again, doesn't he, the Northern Irishman? I'd have been down for about a week if I'd had landed from that height. It's not a bad ball, that. And look where it's landed. It's right in the middle of the six-yard box. Just slightly too much height on it. Dermot Mee in the D, gets it out to Bauman, just uh, wriggles free from Doyle. Kevin Curley can't keep hold of the ball, fire trying to bring it away. Ennis stepping in, wanted to win that ball back, Curley helping out. Short ball forward to McNeil, McNeil out to the left hand side to find Amas. Bauman. The urgency that Manchester United had to get forward just waned slightly. Well, Joffrey out to Bennett. Oh, yeah, Deli. For Reese Bennett again, who is uh, acting as a right winger at the moment. Murray. Mass 
drops that off to Curley. Sam Murray had continued his run there. He got right in behind in plenty of space, but wasn't spotted. Out of play. Going to be a Brighton throw. United using the goalkeeper to help them get out. Forward, headed away by a fire. It's not a great clearing header though, and a mass can pick it up in a dangerous area. Through it comes to McNeil, who just tries to ghost between a couple. Ayadeli steps in. Turns himself back into danger though, Maxi Ayadeli. Mass gets there again. Curly finds Ennis, chops back, cleared away. Yeah. I have to say it was poor from a fire. I mean, I don't understand why he didn't just nod that ball back to his goalkeeper, but he puts his team in all sorts of trouble with a weak header and to the centre of the pitch. United couldn't quite make the most of it, but that would have been easily tidied up. He'd have just nodded it back to his keeper. Neil has a go from distance, but um, optimistic from the Manchester United number nine. <laughs> he was always off balance, falling over. Takes a touch, lifts up his head. Thinks there might be an opportunity on there, but drifts wide of the mark. Mullins goes back to Jackson, turns this to McGill. Had a little bit more going on in the opening stages of this second half than we had in the first. That almost falls to the feet of Barrington as well. Just enough from Manchester United. Yeah, Sam Murray, I think it was, who got the touch. I knew exactly how much was needed to get it back to Dermot Mee. Me. Mass comes back to Sam Murray. Murray back to me. Puts it clear and straight up the middle, but if United forwards are not in that position. One back by United, that's well read on the right-hand side by Missing. That's not a bad ball either from Reese Bennett to find Charlie McNeil, who looks to go round the outside, lent on referee, having a long, hard think about it, says goal kick. Yeah, he just tries to get across him. Good ball by Reese Bennett down the side. And Jackson... There's an arm across his yeah, shoulder. Yeah, I mean, there is. You've, you've seen them given, for sure. I just wonder if he'd have gone past Ben Jackson and he wasn't in the area and he'd have done that. Would he then have given a, a free kick, the referee? Didn't want to take it to extremes and give a penalty. No. Give him the benefit of the doubt, the defender, but... Still not quite in the right frame of mind to talk about penalties after the last seven days or so. <laughs> Side flag goes up. And that one yesterday just a step too far for me. Well, it, it, I have to say it conned me. Well, it, you thought it was a penalty at the time. It, it, it did con me, yeah. I, I, and then, obviously, you don't have the benefit of the, the, so many different cam, camera angles, but when you do see it today, you, you are quite convinced that... As, as much as Aaron Wan-Bissaka didn't need to make the challenge, Harvey Alec was always going away from goal. He, he makes Anthony Taylor's mind up for him, but if they enlist the help of VAR, you can see that he doesn't make any contact and, and he deliberately, Harvey Elliott, plants his right leg underneath the outstretched leg and then goes over. 
Um, and for me, whoever was on VAR, I think it was John Brooks, he should have said, I think he's tried to con you there, Anthony Taylor, come and have a look. Well, they will have checked it. They check every penalty, but obviously didn't think there was enough in it to overturn it. But it doesn't make an awful lot of sense to me. Maxi Ayadeli, heavy touch inside the D. Allows Brighton to steal the ball away. Amass nicks in again. That's the ball back for Manchester United. Oh, he's done brilliantly. Harry Amass. Oh, oh it's over the bar. Well, it deserves so much better from the Manchester United winger. He's done brilliantly to steal the ball back. Dancing into the penalty area. Can't get it on target. Yeah, lovely little bit of skill. Probably the first that we've seen. He intercepts it. He goes past basically three players. Nobody gets close enough to make a tackle. There's one. There's two. There's three. Just shifts it just to give him that better angle and to take it away from the defender. Just leaning back. What a shame. If that was maybe on his left foot coming in from the right, I think that would have broken the back of the net. I was just about to say exactly the same thing. Knocks it onto his right foot. Needs to do that from the position that of he's course. in. He's made the right decision. But uh, as he does so, slightly weaker foot for Harry Amass. He had hold of his shirt. Down as a free kick. <laughs> he had hold of his shirt, didn't he? The referee says no. Well, he's got an assistant down this side, surely, that can see that. It's, a, it's an odd decision. I mean, we can see that's a free kick. More changes being readied for Manchester United. A couple of changes, I think. One of those is Ethan Wheatley. Hot off the back of his hat trick on. Saturday morning. Referee is going to give the free kick to Manchester United. That's going to allow these two changes. So Wheatley onto the field, and so too Amir Ibragimov. So, first change for Manchester United will be Curley leaving the field, Ibragimov coming on. Second change will be Ennis leaving the field, Wheatley coming on. Well, said to me before the game, Ben, didn't you, that you wanted uh, the opportunity to see Ibragimov in action, and you're going to get that opportunity. Yeah, I've seen him a couple of times in, in the 18s. Oh, well, this is a lad who, in the last week, has only just turned 16. And he's a, a fantastic talent. And to be playing at this level at such a young age just is testament to what a very, very good player he is and how highly thought of he is at Manchester United. I've also seen him a couple of times and another one of those with all of the talent in the world. You don't play at the Manchester United Academy unless you are talented. Wheatley. I think one of the things that impressed me most about his performance on Saturday morning in that 9-1 win over Liverpool was just how dominating he was. Like all of a sudden he figured out that his size was a real attribute yeah. for him. Yeah, proper asset. You can see in the action early. It'll be slightly different this, won't it, coming on for... Ethan Ennis, because Wheatley is much more of a, a target for Manchester United to hit. Early press on the goalkeeper too, and it's won back by Manchester United. Forcing the, uh, forcing the error. Very nearly comes through to Ibragimov. Mm, it was just slightly careless, the pass from Reese Bennett. Played it behind him. Brighton with McConville. Forced back by United. A lot of players across that back line. Makes pressing tricky. They are going to get out here with a fire. Oh, 
open field to Doyle. Drag him off. Terrier like. On the left hand side, and some work to do here for Reese Bennett up against Doyle. Cross it comes. Chance for a cross headed away by Sonny Al Joffrey, put back into the penalty area, and everybody leaves it alone. Yeah, when Reese Bennett isn't there to head it, Sonny Al Joffrey is. Another rare foray by Brighton to try and get in behind Manchester United, but I think the more the game goes on now, the, the more comfortable they look. Just, just had a buzz in my ear to say that that might be Brighton's first shot of the game, which is absolutely terrifying. Ball into the penalty area. That is astonishing if that's right. An hour gone. The first legitimate shot of the game. Goodness me. And it's confirmed. Wow. Oh, very nearly an error. But uh, Brighton just don't react to the fact that the ball was loose on the edge of the penalty area. United can comfortably get there. Ayadeli now coming in the other direction. Wheatley looking to oh. make a move into the penalty area. Ayadeli plays it in between the two. Makes not one decision, nor the other. Yeah, and Ibrahimov, obviously, if he'd have sort of opened his body out and got his head up, Max Ayadeli, he would have seen that Ibrahimov was hairing through to his left-hand side. He was just facing the wrong way, wasn't he? And he only had one thing in his mind, Max Ayadeli. Wheatley is definitely using up some of that uh, energy that he brings Wants to try and keep that press going. Here he goes again, just trying to make a nuisance of himself. Brighton going to play through that press. Going to get past Al Joffrey that easily. Drag him off. Does get there. One back by Bauman. And Bauman is going to try and get through the middle. As it's a sure. cynical foul, a professional foul, and uh, a booking to boot for Kamari Doyle. Right. I said to you at half-time that I really felt as though Josh Duffus was probably going to be replaced, if not at half-time, then soon after, but he's been completely ineffective. And the fact that... I'm just That isn't him, obviously, that was Kamari Doyle. Yeah. <laughs> but he loses the ball too easily, and as your focal point... I'm surprised that he hasn't been replaced. It's not been one of his better games, that is for sure. And Brighton needs some impetus going forward. That's uh, not a bad ball across field either for Nielsen. Nielsen's done well to bring it under control. Pokes it across, good defending. Just clear your lines if you're unsure. That's what Reese Bennett does. Yeah, it's a good ball over the top. I thought he was a bit wasteful, Nielsen. Didn't need to give it away as cheaply as that. I have, uh, I have misnamed Sonny Al Joffrey there. Apologies, it was Al Joffrey's clearance. Couple of changes coming. First one will be Nielsen. So Nielsen makes way. Be replaced by Lewis Flower. Ben Jackson is number 15, Lee Cavana. And Lee Cavana onto the field to replace uh, Ben Jackson. So a couple of changes for Brighton, and the change that Ben thought was coming still hasn't come. No. I'm just wondering whether this might be a change of formation for them. No. Flower has been quite effective for them over the course of this season. He's their second top goal scorer. Six goals, three assists for him, so does have a little bit about him. Important to point out that Brighton have only scored 33 goals this season. They've also uh, conceded 33 goals. They have a goal difference of zero. So not a, a huge number of goals, but 16 of those goals scored by their top two goal scorers. So half their goals coming from two goal scorers, and that's Mark Amani and Lewis Flower, who has just come onto the field. Murray, it's a ball into midfield, that's really well done from Charlie McNeil to pick out Wheatley. 
Oh, your deli. Weekly looks for that first time ball out to the right hand side. Just doesn't make enough of a connection with it. And then commits the foul, gives the free kick away to Brighton. Come from the back four now. Yeah. Well, they probably needed to change something, didn't they? Because yeah. it really hasn't been working for them, Brighton. United have been better in this second period, but haven't really been challenged in any way, shape, or form. And again, United will take that all day long. That's in Pennington Flash. Only if you live near Lee Sports Village would you know about Pennington yeah. Flats. I mean, it's halfway down the East Lanks, that. Yeah. Lovely nature reserve, Pennington Flash. Good for bird watching. Open water swimming. Good place to take the dogs to. The thing is, while it's still 1-0, you know, I think if United did score a second... It's game over. Touch, it, not game over, but I think you'd be far more sort of certain that United were going to go on and win it. But while it's still 1-0, you never know, do you? Brag him off. Finds Wheatley. Wheatley with the turn. Looks to get it back to it. Brag him off. Lovely touch. Can he score? Looks to get the shot away. It's blocked. Shot comes in. It's wide. Well, it's going to go out for a corner. It's been deflected, but it's a lovely 1-2 with a off into the penalty area, just can't convert. Yeah, really clever. This is it again. Really clever. I mean, Duffus doesn't make a tackle at all. I mean, you get a corner out of it, but it's like little injection of pace, little one-two. It's what this game needs. Decent pass back into him as well from yeah. Ethan Wheatley. Here's it the really delivery was. into the penalty area. It's Wheatley who makes the connection. Ghosting across the man at the front post, but can't glance his head of goalwards. It's a good delivery as yeah, well. Yeah, it is from Bauman. Yeah. Nice <laughs> flat delivery with plenty of pace on it. You're a Della Fire there, though. You've got to be a little disappointed that you've not managed to get there ahead of him. It's uh, from Wheatley. Working harder. Well, he's now got a match in the air, hasn't it, La Fire? impetus at all is that have options forward but sideways movement of the ball now they go forward but too soon the run of Louis Flower is offside yeah that wasn't even close that just being a real nuisance he's forced the error to fire just manages to recover one back by McNeil oh McNeil's just going to go direct looks to work into the penalty area again very nearly United forcing the error chance here for Brighton if they can get it out to the right hand side oh, but it's dead a man over as well didn't they intercepted <laughs> Amas coming back the other way. Oh, Amas has got options as well, and he looks to spread the ball out to the right-hand side. That's well defended from Kavanagh. It's better the second half, Ben. It is. Still not stunning. It's, it is better than the first half, though, that is for sure. It's well intercepted again. Oh, it's... Squeezed off the boot of Al Joffrey, and actually it's turned into an opportunity for Brighton. 
into the penalty area. Looping one, ends up on the roof of the net. Well, Dermot Mee had to be absolutely certain that that was going to drop onto the roof of the net. I think he's probably ended up getting a touch on it onto the roof of the net, but he needed to make sure because it was dropping. Take another look here. Yeah, he just pushes it onto the roof of the net, doesn't he? It's how precarious a 1-0 scoreline is, Ben. It is. Again, Brighton with a gaggle of three or four players around the penalty spot. Here comes the ball into the penalty area. It's going to be Rory McConville and a chance and an equaliser. A precarious 1-0 scoreline undone by Brighton. And it's Louis Flower, the substitute on, who scores. Adds his uh, seventh of the season. And Manchester United peg back one apiece. Yeah, well, it was another good ball in from his first couple being cleared by Reese Bennett and one being taken by Dermot Mee. His last corner landed in the perfect spot for the boy who headed it there, McConville. And he met it perfectly. And even though that was blocked, Louis Flower was on hand to poke home the rebound, or to smash home the rebound, actually. But they've never really looked anything like, but we've only just been talking about, haven't we, that 1-0, anything can happen. You can make a mistake, you concede from a set piece, which is the more likely, and that's exactly what's happened. And, uh, and now United need to go and score again. It was a good header from McConville and another good ball in from Doyle, I have to say. United have looked to be in the ascendancy in this second half too. Just been sucker punched somewhat by a set piece. I think they've just granted the goal to Rory McConville. Well, I know he won the initial header, but it wasn't him that put in no. the rebound from the header, was it? I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was Louis Flower. <laughs> it was one of the two of them. Here comes Bauman. Amas. Gets through a lot of running, Bauman, doesn't it? We got it wrong, Liam. I think we've got it wrong. Yeah. Was McConville. So he got up to his own rebounded header. That is impressive. So, Rory McConville then. Made Granted up for his it. own goal. Yeah. yeah. Granted it to, uh, to Louis Flower, but both goals in this game have gone to Rory McConville. Bauman looking to get that back through to Charlie McNeil, but intercepted. There has been another change as well for Brighton. Caelan Vickers has made way. Vickers has been replaced by Eiffel. Here it comes. We're having another look at it here. Oh, it is. Oh, it was, yeah. Swept home by Rory McConville. There you go. Yeah. And the, <laughs> and the player we somehow believed it to be it wasn't even in the picture it, uh, uh, he was he was just <laughs> quite far away <laughs> well I do apologise yeah, well look it was a goal yeah we it's more of an interest to Brighton who scored their goal but what we're interested in is the fact that we need to get back into this game with a goal of our own yeah I agree and that one we might get right <laughs> do you want to know something hilarious the electronic substitutes board has, uh, has got a bit wet and apparently has malfunctioned down on the touchline, so they're not sure it's going to work if there are any more changes. <laughs> <laughs> Cameron Pope reporting for us on the touchline has just sent that message through. I think they'd make them waterproof. Chance here for Brighton. Get the cross in, but it's straight at uh, Dermot Mee. That was the first we've seen of substitute, I feel. Right. So, Manchester United with 15 minutes to go, Ben. Can they get themselves a winner? 
Well, let's hope so, because they have been the more deserving team. We don't want to keep harping on about what a, you know, a sort of low-quality game it's been. But it has been better in the second half, and United have looked the more likely. So let's hope they can justify that by scoring a winner. And it comes back to Al Joffrey. Oh, you're Delhi. It's a good run by Bragimov there from right to left. I hope he went with him either. There he is. Movement is good, isn't it? Yeah. Murray to Bauman. Another change being ready for Manchester United. Jacob Devaney on the touchline. Getting himself ready to go. Loose. Given away by Brighton. Picked up by Rhys Bennett. Oyadeli out to the right-hand side. Missing. Bauman looking to work that into the box again. Comes all the way back to the keeper, McGill. Miss it. United now playing the football firmly in the Brighton half. It's a foul. And referee points for the free kick United's way. I think we are going to have a change. That change is going to be Jacob Devaney. Coming on for... Zach Bauman, I think. Let's see who's uh, heading to the touchline. It is Zach Bauman. So Bauman does make way. Devaney on. Now Devaney's played 17 of 19 for the under 18 for this season. He has been almost ever present. Metronomic in midfield. Now being asked to do the job. For the 21s. Another change for Brighton 2, Barrington leaving the field, Alborus coming on to replace him. Zane Alborus, some name isn't it? I don't think I've mentioned Luca Barrington's name once in this game. You may have done, but I, 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 he, he just hasn't come on my radar at all. Quiet, quiet game for Luca Barrington. Devaney. Squares this up to Al Joffrey. Murray. Oh, he's done well. McNeil again just can't quite recover his footing. Lovely bit of body movement to get himself moving in the right direction. Head of forward is out of position from Bennett and now having to do some defensive work and that is quick and into the penalty area dangerous again loops up Bennett stands his ground I don't think Reese Bennett's done anything wrong there the referee doesn't either nothing at all if, if anything he was fouled down in the penalty area oh, very nearly causes problems for Al Joffrey but it is Duffus, who's down in the penalty area, but I mean, he's gone absolutely flying into the back of Reese Bennett, hasn't he? I'm just hoping that he, ha he hasn't landed awkwardly because he isn't moving, yeah. he's, he's not moving his legs at all, is he? He stayed so in I hope exactly this isn't serious. Position. I think he's winded himself. I'm not sure, but it's really good defending. And here, as he comes in here, he climbs. Oh, maybe, yeah. Yeah, it's a little twist, he's isn't holding it? His left, he was holding his left yeah. knee, wasn't he? It's not a nice landing, that. It was, uh, he was twisting as he was coming down. Hopefully, his studs haven't got caught too hard. He's certainly having a little bit of attention to that left knee. Another busy week for... 
Manchester United. All right, let's take a look at the two goals that we've seen before I start telling you about everything else that's going on this week. Down the left-hand side, Amas with the uh, cross turned into the back of his own net by McConville. And then it was McConville at the other end again to make it one apiece. And again, it's a set piece. Deflects and then smashed home. There'll certainly be a, a little bit of an inquest as to who was marking Rory and McConville. Let's hope that Josh Duffers is OK. I'm not so sure it's looking good for him to continue, but I just hope there's no long-term damage there. And he's not going to continue, obviously. And if they... They haven't got any more subs left. No, they have not. Unless they're going to bring uh, Hugo Fisher on. The goalkeeper. He's a goalkeeper, yeah. Which they could do. It's another body, isn't it? I think we shall be, see. I think they'll be more concerned with how Josh Duffus is, so yeah. yeah. Let's hope that he is okay. Right wing corner going to be taken by Kamari Doyle. <laughs> Doyle in the rain at Lee. Launches this one into the penalty area. Loose in the box again. Out comes Dermot Mee. Smothers and deals with that situation. Set missing going. Missing. It's rather the challenge. Bit of a clumsy one from McConville. Gets it away to Ibrahimov though. And now Ayadeli. Ayadeli looking for Ibrahimov again, but threading. Uh, the finest of eyes of yeah. the smallest needle. Yeah, there really wasn't much space for him to to play that pass through. Break him off. Finds a bit of space and gets it out to Amas. Has Murray on the overlap. Comes back in field to a Brag him off. Moved on to Bennett and now out to Ayadeli. Bennett comes back to Al Joffrey. Fired out to Murray. Devaney. Missing back into Bennett. Now Devaney. Devaney and Finn McAllister doing a really good job for the under 18s on Saturday morning. Protecting the back four, but also starting all of the move off, all of the moves off. They were uh, vitally important. Offering the same again today. Bragimov toes that through to Murray. Murray gets it out to Amas. Amas with a lovely bit of a movement, looking to get the cross in. And as he does so, just a little too close to the Brighton defender. Yeah, great bit of disguise from Harry Amas the way he stepped inside. I did, I did have to chuckle though. This poor old Ibrahimov got a fire standing straight on his foot. And he felt it as you would. Yeah. And that's, then, a, that's a rugby tackle. It is a rugby tackle, yeah. Just like his uncle. Quite literally. <laughs> so you're on the debate this week, aren't you? That'll be available for you on the Manchester United website and app and MUTV. We've got another under-21s game coming up for you on Friday night against Liverpool. That's here at Old Trafford. And then a really busy Saturday. It's really busy on Saturday. I'll tell you all about that in a second. As here comes Devaney. Runs over the top of the ball. Whipped in by a mass. Headed goalwards, but Geoffrey just couldn't quite get up high enough, could he, to get over the top of the ball and nod it down. Bad delivery yeah, though decent. from Harry Amas. No, it isn't. Probably maybe slightly too much height on it. Agreed. So, just the United Academy. More for you on Saturday morning. Stoke, the under 18s play, followed by Bournemouth, of course. Match day live with you an hour and five minutes before kickoff. On Saturday evening, 5 30 kickoff. Another late one on a Saturday for Manchester United. Well, the fans. 
got to feel sorry for them, haven't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. And then and then they just moved the Crystal Palace game to Bank Holiday Monday, where there's no trains. Quarter past eight kickoff as well. It's not even like that's at 7.45. That's quarter past eight. There's no chance you're getting back from Crystal Palace at that time of night. So you're going to have to be sharing lifts or getting coaches or staying over. They'll still be there, oh, Liam. In their numbers, They mate. will still in be there. Numbers. Make no mistake. Or your deli. To the penalty area, cleared away. The only fixture I haven't told you about is Manchester United's women who played Chelsea in the FA Cup semi-final on Sunday. We'll get underway at 2.35. Five minutes to go. United in possession, still pushing for a winner. Away. Brag him off, weaving through a couple, trying to find a way through. Oyadeli spins, finds a bit of space, manages to get it into the penalty area. McNeil looking to get this into some room so he can get the shot away. Devaney. More and more pressure from Manchester United. Ball floated in towards the back post. A mass with the effort. Shots of handball, but uh, I think corner is what's going to be given. Yeah, nice turn from Max Oyedele, and then it comes into Charlie McNeil. Another decent turn from him, but it doesn't really get his head up. And I think he always had in his mind that he wanted to try and create the room for himself to shoot. Maybe if he gets his head up, he would have found somebody in a slightly better position. Is the delivery into the penalty area, headed away. From Wheatley was lurking again. Devaney's going to get this back out to Amas. Oh, Amas with a lovely bit of disguise again. Gets around the first tackle into the penalty area. He's brilliant from Harry Amas, but can't find a red shirt in the penalty area. Superb. Absolutely brilliant. The little shimmy. And then to go again down the touchline. This is really clever. He's got very, very little room to manoeuvre. And then he takes... The more narrow option. It's brilliant from the fullback, wing back, winger. A bit of everything. Yeah, you name it, he does it. Yeah. Tickets still available, by the way, for Manchester United's women against Chelsea. That one's at the Lee Sports Village in the Adobe Women's FA Cup. Tickets also on sale for that big game against Chelsea, which will be here at Old Trafford on the 18th of May. See how many we can get into Old Trafford for that day. Should be. An excellent atmosphere. Given away in midfield. Oh, it's forward. And Brighton with a real opportunity. Flower with the effort. Big foot save. And another big save from Dermot Mee. And then the block from Devaney and Manchester United survive. Right. A combination of really good goalkeeping and last-ditch defending, but... It's the first time that they really got in behind. Good save Brave on both occasions. Yeah. And then Jacob Devaney blocks the, the, the follow-up shot. But from a game that you look very comfortable in, you now want to make sure that you don't end up losing because that would be a proper injustice. 30 seconds of normal time to go. Ball into the penalty area, headed away. Again, it's Brighton that managed to win this, though, and they're in a dangerous spot with Doyle. Whipped in again. Me comes out. Oh, there's a collision in the penalty area. Referee's always giving the free kick. Yeah. Too much on the goalkeeper. Too strong on the goalkeeper. United free kick. Yeah. Normal, normally, I, I'm a little bit... Well, I'm, a, I'm very critical of goalkeepers, but I've got no problem with this. It's a really good ball from Jamie Mullins. And he was brave, Dermot Me. Yeah, it takes the contact, and doesn't that, he? That was a that was a foul. Into six minutes of time added on. It's a strong challenge. Needed to make sure that he won the ball there because had he not, dangerous one. Wow. Too much for you, anyway. Uh, it was forceful. There's no question. I don't think that he was off the ground. And 
you can count it as being reckless, but it was it was certainly full blooded from Lee Kavanagh. Al Joffrey. Down goes Reese Bennett under the challenge and referee gives the free kick United's way. Riedeli. Brag him off. That's an equal through to Missing and Missing's into the penalty area. He's got some ability from that kind of distance. Corner. He's not going to win the corner. That was just a moment where I wondered where that flag was going. Yeah. <laughs> Same as you. But uh, it is a corner for Manchester United. Maybe. Four and a half minutes of added time left to play. Harry Amass on corner duties for Manchester United. Here comes the delivery. Whipped in. Cleared away. Devaney. Gonna switch it back out to Amass. Lovely bit of control. Missing. Towards the back post, just too deep from Ashton Missing. Yeah, I think he needed to. Oh, what's happened here? He's clutching the back of his right leg, Harry Amass. Do we think that might be. I'm hoping it's a bit of cramp, but. Well, if, it, see. if it was cramp, it'd be stretching it, wouldn't it, surely? Yeah. Just, uh, well, he's on his feet. That's good news. Take another look at what happened here. Uh, innocuous, wasn't it? I, I still can't work it. I can only assume that he, he has. He has pulled his calf muscle. See how he's moving. Once, uh, this ball is delivered downfield by Tom McGill. Yeah. It's uh, a little on the ginger side, isn't it? From Harry Amass. Trying to get back into position. Doyle steps away, gets the shot in, nearly met at the back post too. Well, <laughs> could have, could yeah, have been, couldn't it? I didn't think there was any danger there at all. Until there was. Until... Yeah, well. Lily Flowery Flower. was there, wasn't he? Well, that would have been extraordinarily rough on Manchester United. But they conceded at that point. Missing. Trying to put some pressure on Duffus. So bragging off and then Missing gets upended. Referee blows for the free kick. We notice how many of these players have got on both sides, got the socks rolled right down. Yeah, I don't understand it. Well, I mean, Eric Harrison would have... We'd have got a clip <laughs> round the ear roll. And worse, I would have thought. There's been a couple of weird things that have happened with socks in recent years. There was the um, the whole cutting their feet off the socks and having a different colour sock underneath. Yeah. So you end up with, like, tube socks. Chance here, maybe, for Manchester United. Pulled back towards it, Bragimov. Going to go behind for a corner. Uh, that happened for a little while, still going on. And then the next thing is cutting the holes in the back of the socks. Oh, just... Having him rolled down like Steve Claridge. Yeah, Jack Grealish is a proponent of the uh, socks being rolled right down, isn't he? So too Harry Amass. I mean, how small have your shin pads got to be to fit in there? <laughs> like fingernails. <laughs> That's the other thing, isn't it? Shin pads have got smaller and smaller. Mine used to go around my ankle as well as up my shins. 
comes the delivery. Turned away. Well, as far as Ibrahimov gets it back in. Going to be another corner. Yeah. Corner is given. Brighton upset. But one more opportunity as the time ticks towards conclusion. Ibrahimov does win the, uh, the corner. Can United nick it? Wouldn't that be peak Manchester United? Here comes the delivery. Headed up in the air and Penn thought that was heading Wheatley's I way. I did, I did. Hamas wriggles free. Gets it through to Missing. Missing goes down in the penalty area. Referee says, nothing doing. Me. Harry Hamas can't have pulled his calf. No. So Not if he's still running free. like yeah. that. He must, must be there. Severe bout of cramp. Full time whistle goes, and Manchester United can't take all three points. First goal coming from the fine work between Sam Murray and Harry Amass down the left hand side. The cross turned home by Rory McConville into his own net. And it was Rory McConville that managed to bag the equaliser in the second half, too. Again from the left hand side, but this time from a corner. The initial shot blocked, but the follow up converted by McConville. United did have opportunities to potentially go and grab a winner, but a game that was fairly even over the course of 90 minutes comes to the end with honours even. Manchester United won, Brighton and Hove Albion won. So, honours even then. Um, one all it finishes, United perhaps Shaded it, but Reese Brown watching it with me, it's um, probably about a fair result. Did either side for you do enough to win it? Um, no, I think second half a lot better in terms of being in control of the game. Um, but you know, just in that final third, couldn't get the uh, just couldn't get past that finish line, unfortunately. Yeah. It's a shame, really, because a win would have been really helpful as we move towards the latter part of this season. But with a couple of games in hand over the likes of Brighton, still loads of matches left for them. To make sure they're in the mix towards the end. Yeah, definitely. Still, still in for it all. And like you said, you want to definitely finish in that top half um, towards the end, or, or be in the top half. Of course, a, be a better place finish means oh. a home tie, though. You know, yeah. it's it's the infant season for this new Swiss style method. So we're just getting to grips with it. Yeah, no, we? of course, yeah, of course. A, a lot's changed, of course, since uh, <laughs> yeah. since I was in the uh, in the reserves there. But no, but I think I think overall, I feel um, you know it's probably. A disappointing result, you know, for for Travis, for the for the players as well. Um, but it, it does happen in football, doesn't it?